welcome to another Relax and Paint. I'm thrilled to come on each week and share new techniques, fun little tricks, fun little quick shorts that you can paint and feel some success. And after you watch this, if there's any part of it that you want more practice with, go to Practice Drugs on Fridays. But it's a whole section on right here on my YouTube channel called Practice Drugs. If you feel like I'm not loading right, I have the loading there. I made that just for you guys who said I'm new, I wanna do this, how do I start? And what does that mean? What does floating meeting mean? How do I use that? So if I'm quick and I don't happen to say it here, then go there and check it out, all right? So um, I just want you to know that it feels really good to wake up every day with a positive feeling. So the minute we hit the floor running, if we think positive, the odds are that everything's going to be all right. And that's what I was sharing this week and wanted you to think about that. Um, and along the way, when we just need to forget about our woes, start painting. It's fun. All right. So thanks for being here watching me. Please subscribe and click the notification so it lets you know when I'm going to be on. And it looks like I'm crooked. Maybe my, maybe my canvas behind is not quite right. But let's get started. We're going to paint with a stencil today and then put another like flower on there and show, share with you how I get the really pastel colors with the dark colors. All right. Sound good? This is One Stroke Penny with Donna Dewberry. So let's go down to our overhead camera, which is way over here. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to be using today is a stencil. I like this Gamma stencil a lot. And we have those on my website. They're really inexpensive and you can use them over and over. As you can see, I've used this many times. All right. And then I'm going to have my painter sponges. I do a lot of background painting, stenciling, everything with these sponges. And you can even sand off nubs and stuff off um, wood or surfaces that have the green rays on them, all right? So the first thing I did, I got a foam plate and I put patina. This is my multi-surface paint. And this one's called patina. It's got labels on the top like that. And it is just what it says, glass, metal, ceramic. So you can put this onto any kind of surface. I'm gonna use this media uh, paper, all right? So, this media paper is just as textured, it's a little different. It's going to absorb this stencil pretty quick when I put this on here. But I want you to see that I'm going to offset it and show you how quick and easy it is to stencil. All right, so I'm going to move um, everything back here. Dry sponge. I'm going to start with my lighter color first. And I'm going to take and rub it in to the sponge. And when you do that, it doesn't come off. It does come off the plate and into the sponge. Okay, so this is dry, a dry sponge. So I'm going to start at the top. And now look what I've done. I'm hanging it over the painting. So we just have um, over the picture where we're going to paint. All right, so I'm going to make circles up here. Where am I? Oh, down here. <laughs> I'm making circles where I have none. Okay, so I make circles with this. And look, first thing I did was put a spot there. I don't want that spot right there. So we, we want to tape this down or hold this down. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do ombre, ombre, which means we're going to go shade to shade to shade. I like to start with the lightest color and then, oh my goodness, I'm being such a bad example to you. I'm letting it slide. Okay. And I come out here. Okay, so you can check it out and see what it's looking like. All right, so light to dark. And then I'm going to go right in here to the screen. 
All right, that's patina, aqua, and this is fresh foliage. So I'm gonna come right here. And rub that in. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like when we get it away from the background here. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. Now, the thing is, is I don't want this line at all. So I haven't thought about what to do there. But I will, I will figure something else out. <laughs> okay, let's just go right here. And rub some of this overlap it let's see what that looks like we'll overlap that a little bit and then i'll put a little bit of aqua down here let's see what that looks like all right that's okay i covered it <laughs> all right see so you can always fix it all right so now i'm going to come down here now, usually what I do, I want to show this to you. Usually I like it really pastel. So I'm going to barely touch it. Let me get some patina, maybe. This paper so it's absorbing it really quickly. And this is if you just did it solid. Oh my gosh. I never let it flip up like that. I'm just being really bad today. <laughs> okay, so we just have little bits. This is just all one color. Now, what you're going to see when we're on the paper, it's going to blur slightly because this paper will absorb and spill out. But what I want you to see is that this is just going to be a background, just kind of like a fun background that, that now we can go paint on top of. All right, does that sound good? Now, the beauty of it too, is I can switch this around and decide I'm just gonna have this at the bottom or at the top, okay? I think I kind of like this because it's different, all right? But it's on a background. You can do this on canvas, on glassware, there's all kinds of things you can do this on. Now, let's go to our second plate. Now, on this second plate, I have put magenta. This is the same paint. Magenta, wicker white, um, moon yellow, citrus green, and sap green. All right. So now I've got to put some medium. This is floating medium. And floating medium has a different bottle now. They, they look like this if you're looking for it. In the store or if you uh, if you purchase it from us we have what you need right there on my website onestroke.com all right so this is clear floating medium and we use this instead of water so i'm on paper so it's going to be dry so this is i've got my 16 flat and i'm going to come right here and pick up some white and magenta all right, now, if you're not next to each other, you can dip over here, dip over there, and then we're gonna come right here and we're gonna work it in. Now, I want this to be a light pink. So I'm gonna work it in a whole bunch, push hard, push hard, push hard, till it gets into the brush, okay? Now, after you wet this brush, what you're supposed to do is lay it on here, and make sure the water runs out of that, okay? So we're not painting with water. If we need anything, we need medium. More white. There we go. See, I'm working it into the pink. So I want it to be a really light pink. Okay. Now, see, so it's only about two inches from here to here. And that's how I'm picking up. Now I can dip a little bit of medium, flatten it, and then I'm ready. Now, what I want you to see is I'm going to start over here. Let's come over here. I'm going to be right here. And I'm going to do a lacy petal. So see how the pink's just on that outside edge? Now, I'm going to go back here and dip a little bit of medium on the pink. 
so that as we go on this dry paper, it absorbs it and we still get the paint color. All right. So notice I can, every stroke I come over here and get more paint. All right, so I'm gonna come here and make them a little bit smaller. I'm going over here a little bit because I got some green there I didn't want to have. But after you touch this, what this uh, multimedia paper, it sucks it up and you can't get rid of it. Okay, so there we go. A little bit more medium. All right, so I need more white, less pink. There we go. Okay, so on each one of these, I push down, I lay the brush flat, my eyes are right here on the outside edge, and I come around. Okay, so if we do this like that, and I do have my scruffy brushes, see these? I do have the scruffy brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. This is dry. Natural hairs, these are synthetic nylon. These are natural hairs um, from like a goat or whatever. And so you want to um, not wet this because you want it to be picking up the paint, make a nice circle. And I put two colors always. I put white and moon yellow on this one so that you get, and then I'm twisting it as I'm bouncing. And you put a highlight in it by doing that. See the highlight, the white, it's glowing. All right, now you can put this in water for to and wash it off. And I pounce that up and down in my basin to get that paint off. Because if you rake it, you might break those bristles. These brushes I rake back and forth. All right, now I'm going to just wipe off the paint that I had on there. And I'm going to come right here to citrus and sap. Get medium and then just start working it in. So it's okay to leave that a little bit brighter than I was thinking because the um, stencil got darker than I thought. I wanted pastel and it got pretty dark. So I put white on the light side, on the citrus side, all right? And I can even put a little bit of pink over there. Medium, okay. Now what we wanna do is we want to go straight out and I'm making an arrow, all right? So if I do that arrow, I lay my brush here and I wiggle to the point. A little bit more white. I'm on this part of the arrow. And I come to the point. Now what I'm gonna do here is I just pull a stem in the middle. All right, so I think that's too, I don't like that tone. So maybe if I pick up white with a little bit of pink and then some green, oops, that is not what I want. <laughs> okay, let's make it mellow. Definitely more mellow than that. Okay, so then a little bit of citrus. So just get some pretty colors. All right, so I'm going to come in here. This is still the 16 brush. You might feel comfortable making it a little bit smaller brush. Those are going to be all the stems out from our painting. All right, so I don't think I got a better color. So let's just go on the outside here. 
Here's my arrow there. Okay. A little bit more. If I don't like it, I can go back over here again. All right, and then I pull a stem into there. All right, I'm gonna come back here with a little bit of that sap green. See that, I'm gonna lay that there and then the light color is going to the tip. And then I pull my stem. All right. So I'm just gonna get citrus and sap on that same brush. And I'm gonna push and stand up, push and stand up. And as I'm standing up, I'm sliding. Watch this. Push down, stand up, stand up, stand up, and slide to a point. All right, so what happens is we're going to pull the stem here. Now, what I'm painting, if I haven't said this all already, is um, like a wild rose a knockout rose just some it's just an open rose with a pretty center now i'm still using this big brush but look how small i can do those little leaves because i'm not pushing hard okay sometimes like i pushed hard on these to make them bigger and sometimes i can do the same one but not push so hard okay <clears throat> Now, I do like to now come in. I didn't want to overburden you with all kinds of technique, but I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we came in here and we showed you a quick, easy rose with a scruffy brush in the middle, and then we can come around. I'm going to take a little bit of water. This is the only brush I use water, and I do the script liner, and I... Get sap green and make it inky. Any of these techniques, go check them out on practice drugs and you'll learn more about those. All right. So I'm going to come here and go all the way around. All the way around the little teeny stamens. I'm going to put a citrus green dot in the middle. And then let's do that to all of them. So I touch and pull all the way around. I'm not putting my finger down because my green's wet. So you can wait till everything is dry to come back and do these. All right. This is a two scrap liner. Don't try to thin with floating medium. You have to use water when you're with your liner, okay? All right, so I, I dip dot, watch. I dot with the handle. I put a little circle there, a little circle here. So I can make the circle bigger if I want to. All right, now we're not through. So what I want you to see as I clean that brush out, now I'm getting thick white. All right. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to tap my little finger. I'm tapping against my little finger. Tap, 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 tap. And we are getting little teeny uh, stamens on here. And like, see, this white doesn't show too, too well. So I can get some yellow. Put a little bit of yellow in there. Okay, just a little teeny. Let's try some yellow first over here where we're going all the way around. Just little bits of pollen. And then put a little bit of white. My problem is this white in the flower is not letting you see this. 
so my fingernail keeps it from smashing. Okay, so just little bits. You can come around and just put little dots on the end of each one, but I'd like it to look like it's got all kinds of little pollen. And so I tap it so it's random. And I say no matter how the petals look, if you have a pretty center, then people don't notice if every single petal is not perfect. Does that sound good? All right. So now I'm going to come in here and just put a little dot in the middle. All right. So that lesson gave you a few items to do. I'm going to come in here with this inky again. Roll the brush. And now watch what happens. This is a simple, instead of curly cues, instead of doing this, which is hard for some people, I make it look easy, but it is more difficult. And you can just wiggle. You come from here and you just wiggle and pull out. All right. Little teeny lines. All right, there we go. So the I think that's all I did. Yeah, that's all I did. And I just signed it. All downward strokes. And I would like to see you do some wild roses and do them every, any color that you want to. But just do some little petals, put some little stamens inside, maybe try some stenciling.